All right. I'm about to uh, hop in, in the Uber. We're going to go up to uh, get, I'm going to get an eye exam. This is going to be the first time. I'll just wait inside here. Um, my driver's license expired. So, I need to get a new driver's license, but I've been noticing my eyesight, you know, the focus on things um, being a little different, let's just say, than I remember. So, I'm going to, uh, oh, it's arriving in a minute. Um, I'm going to go up, get an eye exam, and then... We'll see. Might end up getting some glasses. I've been looking online for various uh, glasses companies. I think that's the Uber guy. Hi. Yes. Hey there. Is it all right if I sit yeah, in the front? Yeah, no, it's totally all right. cool. Why not? I usually like to sit in the front just because I don't want people. That's like. You're not a chauffeur. You're a. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, yeah, I don't want to treat you. Oh, so yes, J Jenkins, take me to the. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> yeah, I totally, I totally feel it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, how long have you been driving for? Uh, Uber? Uh, probably almost a year now. Mm -hmm. It's pretty legit. Pretty good. You like it so far? Yeah, yeah. Kind of being your own boss. Yeah. I'm Set not, your own I'm schedule. I'm like as many hours. I, I rarely do eight hour days ever. Just like off, off and on. Like I made like four hundred, eight hundred dollars in like four days. That's great. Yeah. It was not It's pretty chill. Yeah, I remember those days. It was like super chill. Was like, right. Do you have a set? Schedule yeah, that you usually sometimes, do? Sometimes I work in the morning. What, what if, if I was single, I would just like drive all night, all morning, and do whatever else I gotta do mm -hmm. throughout the day of my own um, stuff. Um, there was a guy I talked to before who, uh -huh. he's, got a, he's got a family, and like as soon as he puts his kid to bed, he's out driving Uber to like, I mean, geez. You know, from 9 p.m. till probably like 3 a.m. And then he picks the kid up, you know, to take, you know, to wake up. He has breakfast with them, and then he takes them to school. And um, so he tries to sneak in stuff. It's interesting just to, like, come yeah. across the different people who have their own methods and how often they do it and what their attitudes are towards it. And um, It seems like the people who have a brighter outlook and a brighter attitude seem to, actually, it's in, and it makes perfect sense, they seem to make more money. The people that I end up talking to who are kind of like, they hate, they hate. They're just like they're making. I'm making this much. Yeah. Money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, they're just acting like zombies now. Oh yeah. They're not thinking outside the box or being strategic or, because they're just like, they're grinding. That's what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. They're just needing in the car, just make some money. They're not thinking about it. They're just like, like, yeah. What do you What do you like to do outside of Uber? What are some of your Hobbies uh, or talents and, or whatnot. Uh, I'm a big guy uh, advocate for like movies, TV, so I am an aspiring actor. Cool. Yeah, I had yeah, totally works with my schedule too. Like auditions, I can easily like clock on. I've had like auditions mm -hmm. where I I would drive around before my audition, making money while also studying my lines in my head. And then after the auditions, go back to driving again. Wow. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty legit. It's better than bartending. Mm-hmm. Do you make, uh, do you, like, do you make your own short films and stuff, too? Uh, I, I have. I made one recently. It's in, like, post-production hell right now. Uh, but, well, if you, I don't know. Well, I'm curious when do you when, think you're going to finish it? Uh, when I producer gets out of a hospital and he's feeling better. Oh, man. Cause, yeah, because I'm, I'm helping him edit it now. 
I haven't gotten a chance to edit with him. He's he's done some editing, but he's, he's called me and like helped me out. So, mm-hmm. well, if you when you know if you, let's say you get it finished this year. Um, I, I helped co-organize a film festival. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's called... Oh, the, do you have a business card? It's called... Shit, yeah. I don't, um, but I can write down the information. Oh, wait, I, here's a pencil I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I write it down? Uh, do you have a napkin or anything hiding uh, in your glove compartment? Let's see. Um, it's called Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival, and uh, oh, it takes place... Right over on Lankers, uh, over there at the NoHo Seven. Here, I'll, I'll have you write out on the yeah. on the notes in my iPhone section, the notes section. Of my and I'll get gi- I'll give you um a thirty percent off um code that you can use when you guys submit. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I I just love being able to. Uh, I know there's so much talent out there that um, would appreciate a, a larger, you know, broadcast of their talents or passions, who knows what. And um, it's just so fun to be able to be in a position where I can <laughs> I can plug people's movies yeah. into this festival and see them shining up on the silver where screen. Where do you have it? Uh, um, where is it located? So right over there, uh, let's see, it's la- near the uh, Red Line, North Hollywood Red Line. Okay. That NoHo 7. And this is our fourth year doing it. Oh, cool. And each year it gets a little bit bigger. And last year we fi- we actually made our money back. The first nice. few years we were just, you know, didn't yeah. make money back. But So now, I think the word's getting out there on Film Freeway. That's where you submit it through. And uh, so we're, we're one of the top 100 best-reviewed film festivals, which excites the hell out of me because I was looking at all these other film festivals. Some of them have been around 15 years, and they got maybe 20 reviews and we have 53 reviews and I'm like what the heck this is cool it's awesome to know that we put out this good vibe with these people and they want to keep coming back we had people coming in from Paris from the Netherlands from Colorado all over the place oh so it'll be in that like plaza you know that like that Ralph's uh, plaza in there yeah 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 and there'll be um, there should be a little yeah probably this little this little driveway here yeah right in there and then, um, from what they told me, as soon as we get in there, it should be on the right side near a Starbucks. Um, there's, it's an I place. What's it called again? I something? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. It should be on the right up here someplace. They said it was in this little area. City, Togo's, Baskin Robbins. Oh, that'd be a great place to meet at. This is good. Okay, yeah, you could just drop me off here. Okay. I'll, f- I'll find it over in this little area. Awesome. Um, right, uh, here, let me. Yeah, yeah. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Kapow IFF dot. Um, and then use the all capitals Kapow Student 19 and you get 30% off of there yeah cool so there you go I think it's in there sweet it's awesome okay and what's Thanks your name so much. Kurt I mean Adam no holy sorry. shit I'm like whoa what are the chances <laughs> Adam pleasure to meet you <laughs> alright man Kurt, all <laughs> you right, take later. care bye <laughs> All right, that was awesome. That was enlightening. All right, now we're going to find the optometrist. And I'm going to stop this here because uh, I'm going to see if I can record uh, everything while, while it's going on in there. It's Superhero, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. Myself to hear what, what he did in his younger years. Okay. All right, let me just wait for that picture. Okay. It's basically going to take some measurements of your eyes. So mm-hmm. have you brush your chin on that chin And then pour it all the way forward. Do you want this to be a little higher or lower? Is this okay? Oh, this is good. Oh, this good? Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're going to see a farm in the background there. So just keep looking at the farm. It's probably going to go in and out of focus. Mm. Am I looking at this little dot thing in front of me? Yeah, or, I'm going to line it up for you in a second. 
Oh, gotcha. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I see something. There's yeah. a little bar note there. Okay. So to try to hold your chin still for a second here, it's going to take some measurements. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for your other eye. So during during that process, was I trying to fo were, was I supposed to focus no, on that throughout the whole time? It does it for you. Oh 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. You just have to look in. All right, Kurt. So we're gonna go to the exam room. So okay. I'm gonna follow you out here. Okay. And you're gonna be making a left up in the tower here. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna make a left, right, and then closer. Okay. And then I'll have you take a seat on the stairs. Great. All right. So I'm just gonna wipe everything off. Okay, far away? Or is it mostly far away? Yeah, as far, far uh, yeah, as far as I know. Okay. Like I can read that poster over there. Okay. Um, the books. Okay. And have you ever had any eye injuries or infections in the past? Uh, oh, you know what? I think I had pink eye in the past. Okay. Was there any complications from that? Just that it felt like there was just like mucus in my eye all the time. Um, you mean currently still that's what you're noticing? Oh, no, no, oh, not okay. anymore. No, no, okay. this was like, I don't know, maybe a year ago or something like that. But oh, that's, okay. that was the only eye, you know, if I were to consider it an eye issue, that was probably it. Okay, did you get it looked at or treated? Um, no, I went online and I found, like, some ingredients that you could use that kind of help, like, get rid of it and everything. Oh, okay, so kind of like a home remedy? Yeah. Cleaning? Okay. And any medical conditions at all? Not that I know of. Okay. Okay. And you mentioned your grandmother might have had macular degeneration. Yes. Okay. I don't know if that plays into what's happening today or not, but I thought I'd mention it. And then do you currently take any medications right now? Mm -mm. Okay. Any allergies to any medication? Mm, no. Okay. And uh, when did you start to notice the um, close-up was starting to get a little blurry for you? Uh, maybe, hmm, maybe a few months ago. A few months ago? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you never wore glasses in the past, correct? No. Okay. All right. I'd, I would start to notice that, like, Mm -hmm. If I would just close my left eye, my right eye seemed to be a little bit blurrier on okay. things when I'd see stuff, and then... Okay. And it wasn't until... This is another thing I noticed, is it wasn't until semi-recently that I started getting... And I never used to have headaches before, um, but mm -hmm. I slowly started getting just a tiny little bit of a... little bit of a dull pain back there behind my eye. Which eye? Both eyes? Um, uh, or I think right now it's probably my left eye. Um, but I like a have, kind of feeling? I think a straining feeling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's holding up a weight or something, you know, oh, like. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to check your vision far away just to get an idea of how you're seeing. Okay. And then we'll see where everything goes. All right? Okay, cool. So I'll use that to cover your left eye. Okay. And with your right eye. What's the smallest line that you can see clearly? I would say, geez, that that second line, mm -hmm. it's slightly blurry. Okay. I mean, the top one is the clearest. The okay. second one, it looks like it's saying O F L D. Um, I would say the bottom one, that one's A, F, 
E D. And then do you ever experience any like dry eye feeling or itchy eyes? No, uh, um, let's see. I mean, I, I mean, every once I guess I'll get like an eyelash in my eye or something, you know, okay. but aside from that, I don't think so. Nothing major. Okay. Yeah. So I'll have you use that paddle, cover your left eye, and then I'll have you look at my nose here. Okay. How many total fingers do you see? Three. Good. How about now? Two. Good. Cover the other eye. And then look here. How many? Four. Good. And how about now? Three. Perfect. Okay. I'll take that paddle. And I'm going to check your eye muscles. I'm going to have you look here at the top letter H. Just okay. the top letter H. I'm just going to place this paddle here in front of the eyes. Good. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to have you follow this with your eyes. Don't move your head. Very good. Okay, now I'm just going to shine a quick light into your eyes. So I'm going to have you look in that direction there. This is going to be great. And then, do you ever experience any, like, spots floating in your vision? Once in a while. Ooh, that's interesting mm -hmm. you asked me that. Okay, so once in a while, um, there'll be times where, it, and I can't quite tell if it's the left eye or the right eye, because mm -hmm. it seems like even if I close one eye, I'll still see, like, a, a remnant of, like, a, Oh, yeah, that's you know, I'm not talking about like the little floaty things that you see mm -hmm. once in a while, not like those little tiny things, but like it'll be like, like maybe two or three that are just like, almost like, like it looks like they look like little lightning bolts, for the lack of a better word, okay. um, that are kind of going, uh, kind of like diagonally okay. across. Every once in a while, that'll happen like if I walk outside, um, okay. I notice that I'm, I notice that I'm squinting more okay. now that I'm, now that I'm noticing it. Because you kind of experience the floaters, um, that's where the dil dilation comes in for us to check. So afterwards, I'll have our skills you to have your eyes dilated so we can check everything there. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to check the, the overall prescription of the eyes. Um, how we're going to do this is with some lenses. So I basically place it, these lenses in front of your eyes and you're just going to compare um, which one looks better. Okay? Oh, gotcha. If they look the same, that's perfectly fine. And don't worry, I do show you lenses a couple times. Okay? All right. So I'll be looking through here. Do you want this to be a little higher, lower? Is this okay? Uh, this is good. This good? Okay. So I'm going to close the left eye, okay. but keep both eyes open. And uh, with your right eye, what I'll have you do first is focus on that top row. Okay? okay. So looking at those top letters, tell me which lens makes those letters look more clear for you. Okay. This one here is number one, and this one here is number two. Two is n makes everything blurry. Oh. Or two. Oh, this is. So I'll show wait, you. Wait, let's. Yeah. So this is number one, and this is number two. Mm, Which one looks better? Probably. Like probably one? two, I guess. Two is better. Okay. I, I don't know. It's it's close. Okay. I don't know. Try between number two or number three. Well, wait, wait. When you say two or three, are you talking about the lens that's on my eye or the line that I'm the trying lens, to read? The lens. The lens. So this is lens. So you're going to keep looking at the top row. Okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha. So this is lens number two, and this is lens number three. Um, are they between number two, number three? Are they looking the um, same? I guess, I guess three. I, I don't know. It seems like maybe one of them will, one of the letters will be a little crispier than the other, depending on what lens is there. Like, this is look good. This is looking good, like okay. this one. Look at the second row. Does that look better with number three or number four? Number oh. three yeah, no, or not number that one. Four. four? Four looks better, I'd say. And then better between number five. Oh, this is better. Or number six. Oh, five. And then better between number seven or number eight. Uh, seven. And then better between number nine or number ten. Ten. And then again, better between one or number two. Um, one or two. Or two. Um, that's one. That's two. Two. Yeah, two. Okay. I think. Go ahead and read the letters on that bottom row. All right. Try 
Can you see the letters on the bottom row? It looks like A P E D maybe or O. It's an O. Okay. Now this looks blurry on the bottom row, right? This. Is it blurry? Hmm. Or is it still clear? It seems seems cl clearer. Okay. I guess. So I'm looking at the bottom row. Is that better with one oh. or well, that... number two? Oh, number one. Number one looks better. Yeah, and that looks again, good. Better number one or number three? Oh, oh I think one. Or do they look the same? I, one looks better. Uh, yeah, I think one looks better. Versus number three. Or do um, they look the same? Let's seems one. like... Or three. Mm, one. One, okay. These are smaller letters, so read those ones. T, Z, V... F. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and check the left eye. So we're going to do the okay. same thing, all right? So again, looking at the letters on that top row, does it look better with number one or lens number two? Number one or number two? Uh, they're slightly similar. Okay. Um, maybe two. And then between two or number three? Or do they look the same? Mm. Two? Or three? Uh, maybe three. Okay. They're, they're right on the edge of... There isn't really a... Okay. So looking at the second row, is that better between number three or number four? Three or hmm. four? Hmm. Maybe, maybe four. And then better between number five or number six? Oh, six. Okay. Better between number seven or number eight? I would say eight. And then better between number nine or number ten? Mm. Nine or number ten? Na nine. Okay. And then again, one or number two? Uh, one. One. And then three or number four? Three? Three. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then five or number six? Hmm. Five or six? So I'd say six. Okay. Now read the letters on the bottom row. Okay. Uh, that one's A F E O. Unless that's a P. A P E O. Okay. Now looking at that bottom row, is that more clear with one or number two? Oh, two. Okay. Now let's go to the smaller letters. So read those ones. E V O T. Mm hmm. Now this should look blurry or is it clear? That's a little blurrier. Okay. So again, better between number one or number two? I'd say two. Two is better. Okay. And then when you have both eyes open, is that pretty clear? V O T. Yeah. Good. Okay. I'll have you lean back there. Let me set this out of the way. How, co how close am I supposed to have my eyes to this? Am I pushing it right? Am I supposed to push it right up against it? Were like totally earlier? against it? No, you don't want to go too against because it's going to fog up the lenses. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, go ahead and lean back. Okay. Let me just write some numbers down here first. Okay. So the reason why you are having trouble seeing things, especially with the right eye versus the left eye, you have something called astigmatism. Mm. And basically what that is, it has to do with the curvature of the cornea. The cornea is the front part of the eye. Oh. So because it's a little bit more oval shaped, when light enters in, it's a little bit more blurry. It's not very clear. And so that's why when you compare the eyes in general, yes, the eyes are blurry, but the right eye has more astigmatism than the eye on the left. Oh. And then you are also a little bit um, farsighted hmm. in the right eye as well. So the right eye tends to be a little bit more weaker because, uh, because it's farsighted and has the astigmatism. And that's the reason why it's a little bit more blurry compared to the left eye. Hmm. Okay. Now, um, for most patients, we do recommend using glasses for that, um, especially if they're struggling to see things in the distance. Um, so that's an option if you want to look into that. So this would be the prescription for the far away. So you're going to hold this up. That's for the right eye and that's for the left eye. Okay. Just like that. okay? 
So that's how you're oh. seeing with glasses mm -hmm. for the distance compared to when you take the lenses off. That's how you see without. So oh, that's yeah, how yeah. The, uh, the prescription will, will um, improve the vision for you. Oh, that's cool. Okay. All right. Wow. Now, when you first wear glasses, of course, um, your eyes are going to have to adjust. So initially, you may feel a little bit of like a fishbowl effect when wearing glasses. And again, that's just because they're, they're just trying to adjust to what it's being through. Okay. It usually takes about a week for the eyes to get used to that. So you're going to hold on to that oh. for me. And then I'm going to have you look here close up. Now, seeing things close up, is it still okay? And then well, I want you to hold it at the distance you normally hold things when you read. Okay. And does it look clear or does it feel like it's hard to see close? Oh, this... I think it's good. And if you put the lenses up... And then put the yeah, lenses I actually... Down. I mean, I can read them, I can read them either way, I, I'm thinking. I guess when I'm, if I read something this close, mm -hmm. things are a little trickier. Okay, so I'm going to show you something really quickly. Let me let's take the lenses. So what tends to happen to everyone after 40 um, is something called presbyopia. That's the technical term. And um, basically what that means is anytime you want to try to focus something close up, it's going to be a little harder. Okay? So I can show you a prescription that will help you focus for a close up. And it is a different prescription than the distance, okay? Oh, gotcha. So I want you to compare with that one there. And is that how close you normally hold things when you read? Or do you no, 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 I'm, okay. I'm kind of like this. Okay. No, I was just trying to read. See, so I was trying to never, test it. Yeah, you're never going to be able to read that close anymore. Oh. Yeah, so normally I want you to just hold it where you normally hold things to read. And that's okay. where the prescription would be. Yeah, that, um, I can see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything's clear. And then compared to without the glasses? You know, I can still see it, but I do I do notice in that right in the right eye it's a little bit blurrier. Yeah. Yeah. So again, just to review with you, um, you know, there is a prescription for astigmatism. Um, you have a little bit more on the right eye and the left. You have also a little bit far-sighted as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for the close-up, if you're having trouble seeing the fine print, then you can use a different pair of glasses for that. Um, and the whole thing with the whole close-up issue is called presbyopia. It just has to do with the eyes having trouble focusing close-up, which is why people need reading glasses. Yeah. So again, if those are your options. You have We can do one for far, one for close, and definitely you'll have both. That way you can decide which one you want to go with. Okay. Oh, I got you. Now for glasses options, like I said, there's you have a couple. You know, some people will do one for far, one for near. Mm. Um, some people, if they don't like to worry about two pairs, they'll look into like bifocals or progressives, and they'll combine both the far and the close up. Mm. Yeah, so that's how you would do it. There. Oh wow. Okay. okay. Um, main reason why I'm making sure to get this done is because I got to get my driver's license renewed and I want to mm -hmm. make sure that I had this information mm -hmm. and um, you know at some point between here and there mm -hmm. I get glasses and then you know so I go in there so it's not like this is a whole nother step where I have to yeah your I'll take that okay, um, thanks. your right eye will probably be okay it might it might pass um, it really just, because normally what they do is they, they do give 20, 40 letters up on the screen or the, the chart and you're able to see 20, 40 with the right eye. So I think you should be fine, but uh, my advice is of course, just for safety reasons, if you are having difficulty like driving at night and things like that, then obviously have, have glasses just in case. Yeah. So, um, so by having the glasses, it would, it would take some of the strain off of exactly, my... Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, because um, what tends to happen is when you have, um, we call it uncorrected prescription, mm. um, when you have that, your eyes work a little harder, mm. and therefore you're going to experience a little more strain, and then especially if you have two eyes that are a little different from each other, it is pretty common to have one eye to like work a little harder, and therefore kind of experience like that strain and oh. yeah. So everyone's try like trying to catch up with the yeah, other exactly. with the other? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it is pretty common for that to occur, especially when the two eyes are a little different and it, you, your eyes are a little different from each other as you can tell. Yeah. 
Wow, this is fascinating. Do you have any other questions? Or no. Um, is there any way that you can, will I be able to have the uh, yeah, like a? She can give you copies of this. Oh, also, right there's something I was reading about with d a distance between the pupils. Do you do that she one can as well? She that, but she will, she charges for the to do that measurement. Oh, I got you. Classes here. Yeah. So oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Just let her know. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. Okay, me, oh, we're not oh. done. Oh. So the second part of this exam is I can check the health of your eyes. Oh, cool. So this is going to check the eye pressure to see if there's any risk of developing glaucoma and this will rest against your forehead. There's no puff of air, but you may feel something on your eyelashes. Oh, okay. okay. So just keep looking straight ahead that way for me. Good. Perfect. One more time. Good. Okay, so eye pressures are normal. Oh, cool. Let me go ahead and take a quick look at your eyes, and then afterwards she will schedule you to have your eyes dilated, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to have you come on forward. So I won't need to... Um... Um, let's see, have the eyes dilated the before I go into driver's license, uh, for the, um, to get my driver's license, right? No, you don't have to. Okay. Mm -mm. So would you suggest, so it'd be okay for me to get the glasses after the, the I go into the DMV? You can do that, yeah. And you, so you think I'd be okay in a good safe zone with... You should. Again, it, again, the factor that really will determine what they say to you is the person doing that test. If they feel like you're struggling to see that 20-40 mm. line, they'll have you get your eyes tested. Oh, gotcha. But if that's the case, just come back in and be like, okay, and I can fill whatever you need out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and if they, if, you know, we, we go from there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you come on forward, I'll shoot you in there. All right. So I'm going to have you look right over here. This is going to be great. I'm just taking a close look at the eyes, okay? To your left, and then look down. I'm just gonna lift up on your eyelids. And then look all the way up. And then look straight ahead here. I'm just going to take a look inside the eyes. So this is going to be bright, okay? Mm Let's check the left eye, and I'll have you look over here. Okay, you may sit back. Okay, so looking at the general health of the eyes, I don't see any signs of any um, glaucoma or any cataracts or any macular degeneration. Um, but of course, once your eyes are fully dilated, we'll be able to take a more thorough look mm. inside the eye. Um, definitely do wear sunglasses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That does help protect against developing cataracts and macular degeneration. So if you don't already, go ahead and make sure you start doing that. Now, I've heard a lot about... Um, uh, uh, if like computers give off a, a certain the blue light. yeah is mm -hmm. that is that a truth or is that a myth or is it that does. does that hurt your eye does it d damage them worse or well we don't know exactly um, the extent of the damage to the eyes because we haven't had people use computers from birth up until they're older so there's no like proven study that says it does mm. they do know that affects your sleep pattern for sure oh so that's for that's for sure something that has been um, proven. 
But as far as eye health, they're still in the beginning phases of seeing if that will contribute to developing eye diseases. Um, but either way, um, you know, as far as glasses for the computer or phones, um, they, there is an anti-glare coating that does reflect or basically block about maybe 20 to 30 percent of it. And so you can actually add that coating on your glasses so it'll help reduce some of that blue light transmission to the eye. Now I had this theory, I was wondering, do you think that by any chance, because I do a lot of editing yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, creating things. So I'm wondering, I just had this theory that perhaps because, and maybe, I don't know, maybe you found this, maybe you haven't, but I'm curious if maybe by training our, are we training our eyes to only see a certain distance by, by having that um, computer screen in front of us so much or having this? Well, your, yeah, your age, it doesn't matter. When they're younger, it does. But you're already 45, so that, so that whole idea that you can't see close, all that issue there, is you is most likely due to the presbyopia. Oh, okay. Which everyone experiences after 40, yeah. Okay. So that has to do with the presbyopia is where the, uh, there's a focusing system in the eye that tends to slow down once 40 hits. And then oh, eventually gotcha. And stops. So that's your main reason why you can't see close up very well versus prolonged computer use or phone use. Do you think that by looking down most of the time, it's, what's the word I'm thinking of? It's neglecting the ability to, to focus and see, you know, Not things that are up here at all? Barely. Again, after a certain age, all that stuff doesn't matter because mm. now the natural biology of the eye will start taking over and that's the reason why the whole close-up issue gotcha gotcha yeah so up until a certain point yeah it could make some difference for some patients but after 40 it's all just the natural changes that happen over time and i've heard that yeah. carrots you know is this a I don't know if this is an old age old myth, but if, if you eat carrots, does that help with your eyes eye it health? It helps in the beginning, again with the development, because you need the vitamin A. But after a certain age, obviously, of course, like that helps, but it's not gonna be like the cure-all. Right. Um, you definitely want to make sure you maintain a healthy diet. But as you get older, your dietary needs should be more focused on spinach, kale, um, omega-3s, or like salmon, tuna, those types of foods. So I, okay, so let's say, so carrots, um, are, are any of those foods that you just mentioned, are those also good for the eyes, or are you just saying just good for body so health in general? The, because whatever's good for your body is good for the eyes. Okay, so there aren't any that just like specifically target, like, like, like for instance, you know, I'll hear about how as people get older, their eyes will get worse. If I eat these foods... Is there a way that it's like it, no. it's like strengthening it so that that stuff does not? Oh, okay. The presbyopia will continue no matter what. There's oh, okay. No foods or anything like that to help with that. As far as their reading glasses, as far as eye health, like to prevent macular degeneration and all that stuff. Yes, spinach and omega okay. threes. Okay. Yeah, so Good. I like hearing processes. that. Yeah. Okay. Two different things, health wise and the actual prescription. The prescription happens naturally no matter what. But as far as like to do to um, to prevent like macular degeneration or other eye diseases, of course we do recommend eating like spinach and kale and tuna and salmon, those types of foods. Good, good, good. Yeah, this yeah. is good. I need to yeah. hear those. But those as far things. as like prescription, unfortunately, that's that's just the normal natural process. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I've learned so much about eyes today than ever before. I'm <laughs> well, obsessed with eyes. Right? Look at, I'm obsessed with eyeballs. Oh, like okay. I just love yeah. eyes. <laughs> Look at that, I got my, oh, my little niece sent me an eyeball t-shirt oh, really? in the mail. I just love, I they're, they're fascinating. To, yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, this is just valuable information. Even yeah. if I looked on the internet, it's like, it's so far different than, you know, hearing it from a, a human, yeah. you know, yeah. who's excited yeah. about what they've learned yeah. and excited about sharing what they've learned. Yeah, and, yeah. But of course, you know, when you're, when you're coming for your dilation, like I said, the pupils will be a lot bigger because mm. of the drops in them, and we'll take a more thorough look in, and I can make sure like everything else is good to go. I see, and then yeah. that more accurately helps you figure out exactly what kind of the prescription will be. No, but the prescription is already done. Oh, oh, yeah, gotcha, this, gotcha. Yeah, this is more for like the health, the entire health of the eye. Okay, yeah, yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, but okay. your prescription's already been figured out. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, the layers <laughs> just keep unfolding. <laughs> No, I think that's all. Okay.
Thank you so much. This is great. Wow. I mean, this was fascinating to see these different um, <laughs> gadgets. Yeah, it's like from the, like steampunk era. It's like great. <laughs> okay, great, great. Or no, no, I think that's good. all. Okay, and then if you need her to do the PD measurement, she can do that for you. We just charge for that service. Okay. Okay, and then if you can also schedule her to have a diet diet. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. So she'll take care of you. Cool. All right, nice Thank you. Yeah, it's welcome. been a pleasure. Take Thanks care. for all of your knowledge. Yeah, of course. <laughs> all right. Take care. Hi, you too. Hi. All right. So we're doing just the examination for you today. Uh, yeah, just the examination. Okay. Yes. Uh, Great, thank you. It's my first time being to, uh, like I've always been fascinated with eyeballs. And um, You've never gotten your eyes examined? Never got my eyes really? examined. <laughs> never got my eyes examined. Today's my first time, and I'm just fascinated with the equipment that's in there, with uh, all of her knowledge about all this yeah. stuff. I never knew so much about eyes existed, you know, so much um, information that uh, she's, she said some very helpful stuff about the health of the eyes, you know, the things that can help out with the health of the eyes. You're saying omega-3, uh, spinach, and uh, kale. I think those were the main three that she was talking about. So it's good to know that because I think the sooner I just really start eating that stuff up, um, the more I can. Fly. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably have to call you because I know my mom's going to be coming into town, so I want to try to do it when, she, when before she arrives. Uh, um, okay. But also I have a f few other things. But um, I definitely, can I please, oh, is this the card? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to call for, um, to set that up. Yeah, of course. When and um, so, it's the, so it's the dilation. Mm -hmm. um, also, how much do you charge for the, for measuring pu 15. the pupils away from each other? 15. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, let me think. You know what? Maybe can can I can you do that now? Yeah. That that's all right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. So coming over. All right. So I'll have you have a seat here. Okay. Official prescription. I feel. St I feel like. I don't know. I just feel official here. I got this. <laughs> numbers have. written down. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like over the counter kind of guessing. Uh, yeah. Right. Now it's not just like some nebulous thought in my brain. Now it's like, okay, I got the evidence. Here it is. This is a real thing. <laughs> all right. So what you're going to do for this guy here is pretty much. I'll do. I'll measure one at a time. So you're going to okay. hold this like a urban oxygen. Well, oh, I'm going to hold this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're going to look straight ahead, and you see this little, like a little target in the middle, right? Yeah. All right. Look straight at it. I'm going to come closer. So this thing's automatically going to know how far apart they are from each other. I'm checking it right now. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Okay. I feel like I've entered a science fiction film today. All these crazy gadgets, and <laughs> this looks like a little robot here. Yeah, right? The thing in the other room looks like it was from the steampunk era. I mean, it was like, it had years on it and stuff. It was just crazy. You never think about it, huh? Let's see. You're going to look right there. Cool. So let me just write it down for you. Great. Oh, here, I got this little piece of paper. Can you put it on that one? Oh, you want to put it there? Okay. Sure. If you do order like online or anything like that, it'll mm -hmm. probably say like pupillary distance or it'll just be like PD. Oh, oh. And that's what it is. Okay. Wowzers. Thank you. Okay. 
Am I paying for it over here? Uh, credit, please. Uh, sure. Oh, great. You're all set. Great. Thank you so much. And what's your name? Araceli. Araceli. Yes. I'm Kurt. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for everything. Thanks. Bye. There you go, folks. My first eye exam. Hey, Kurt, I just wanted to let you know, yes, 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 I am now on Anchor FM under Miss Ruby Tuesday. <laughs> so I joined the party. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. You know, it's crazy. It's, it's such a rarity that it rains out here that <laughs> when it does, it's such a huge surprise, right? People freak out. I mean, even even me. I, I grew up out in Chicago where it's raining okay. all the time. It's snowing all the time. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so it's like, it's like, it's a surprise. You know, it's like, like when I'm not standing in the rain, it's a welcome surprise to see it rain. <laughs> you yeah. know? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, but being in it, it's like, ah, what am I doing? But um, yeah, the smell of the rain. After it rains, everything is green and just like so beautiful oh, out yeah. there. Now, uh, how long have you been uh, driving Uber for? Three years. Oh, cool. Do you, do you like it? Yeah, it's my full time job. Oh, that's great. Do, do you have like a set schedule that, that you do when you're driving, or do you. Uh... I have my own schedule. I'm driving between, let's say, uh, I'm start like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then I'm stopped like three or four hours, and then I'm start again seven to ten or eleven. Do you find that uh, no traffic thing? Oh, oh, so there's no. Oh, that's very smart. Yeah. That's no very smart. Time. Yes. Because everybody wants the traffic time because they think it's more busy and more money. But no, it's not like that for me. Yeah. If I'm if I'm do one one trip between the rush hour, mm. I'm gonna take like forty minutes and. 10 miles. Whoa. And I can do that in three trips, uh, short trips, without traffic. So. That's such a smart way of doing it. That's that's very, yeah, that's a great way of doing it. Yeah, I, I'm try both and I think about it. I just check a number. Plus it saves your sanity, right? You're not right. like in that, like, ah, yeah. you know, <laughs> the, the, the yeah, craziness exactly. of it all. That's, doesn't make so what are some of your hobbies? So like when you're not uh, driving Uber, what do you like to do? Do you like to write? Do you like to draw? Do you like to paint? Uh, play musical instruments? Absolutely, I like to the, the watch the, uh, sports because before time I was working football, American football for seven years. You were That's working for American football? I was uh, playing. You were playing. That's yeah, cool. For seven years. Wow. What what uh, what team what teams were you on? It was in Mexico. It's a polytechnical. It's like a, here is UCLA versus USC is the best one. Mexico is polytechnical versus UNAM, so that's the best team. So that's UNAM great. It's polytechnical. It's a minor league, but it's not too big like here. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was. Polytechnical. Wow, that's inc that's incredible. So I like the sports. So when you say football, you mean like the American kind of football, not the soccer f football, right? I'm, or do you mean the soccer? I'm played before time too, but I like better the American football. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see in there where they'll, they'll pick the guys up on their shoulders. Have they ever, have they ever done that to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's yeah. great. We're like, ah, they yeah. got you up on the shoulders and you're just kind of moving along. No, it's crazy. When you play it, it's a hard hit. Like, I bet, man. Yeah. I bet because they're like a suit of armor, kind yeah. of, right? Yeah, Thank God matter. that the you guys feel, are wearing feel, it, right? You feel, you even with your shoulders oof. or your everything. Wow, they, man! When somebody hit you, it's hard. I bet. Yeah. 
I mean, I bet if they calculated the the uh, the miles per hour that some of those guys get, you know, yeah. <clears throat> blasted. Combined with you know some of these guys two or three hundred pounds, they're oh, like yeah. they're like human tanks running around. Yeah. Um, Even so, in Mexico, you can find the big people playing football, American football. Oh man! So when you came out here, did you try to do some football as well? No, what I'm saying. When you when you moved out here, did you get into doing football again? No, I'm stopped to do sports. Mm. Yeah, I'm just working. The other day, I. Um, there was an Uber driver. I'm, I'm always interested in finding the stories of the Uber drivers. Um, there's a guy who is a sports agent. So he's one of those agents where he, he, he'll he look at, like, you know, maybe a 15-year-old who's doing really, really good at football, and he can see the future, you know, kind of look at that and go, that guy is going to be a professional someday, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help him get, you know, maybe endorsements, you know, sponsorships mm-hmm. or something like that. But it was so interesting hearing that side of things. Um, of what that entails. Yeah. So you, you watch a lot of football then, Yeah, huh? and soccer, football, yeah. American football, for sure, I, I watch. But soccer, too, I, I like the LAFC. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah, my, right my son's okay, friend is playing on, on the 15 years old guys with the LAFC. Oh, okay. And I like it. Oh, that's cool. Oh, this is the building, this one on the right. Right there? Yeah. Oh, Thank you so much no, for this you. trip. Holy cow. Um, Otherwise, I would have been waiting out there for the bus. Man. So, and what's your name again? Enrique. Bro. Oh, <laughs> you nice take care. You Pleasure wife. to meet you. There you go. Another, another great conversation with an Uber driver. Oh, hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. the Capalpium Festival to accept this award for the music documentary, The One Who Holds Sovereignty Over Everything. Yeah, under God's guidance, the documentary was produced. Thank God, thank Pal. Uh, the documentary is the special release from the Church of Almighty God. Uh, in this film, uh, the, all the lyrics are the utterance of Almighty God, Christ of the Latter Days. The fabulous combination of uh, repetition, uh, the, uh, the music and uh, the, the pictures and guide us to know the creators, every wondrous sees. <laughs> yeah, so I'm so happy to share this uh, documentary with everyone here. Thank you. so many foreign, foreign friends this year. This is also the second year we attend the Kapow Film Festival. And we thank you uh, all the Kapow team members. And the, the main message of our documentary is exactly what the title is trying to convey. And uh, you know, in this world, and, uh, uh, there are many answers and re- uh, I mean, uh, there are many mysteries and answers behind everything that happens in the universe, in each person's life, and even in human's history. And uh, maybe we don't know the reason, but the one who holds sovereignty over everything tell us the old mysteries behind this world and this mankind. And uh, all the, all these things are all related to God's wondrous things and sovereignty. So we just hope everyone could uh, pay, pay attention to our music documentary. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah. by the way, congratulations to all the award winners in this film festival. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys want to talk to the wolf? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They actually going to give an award. Come on. Oh, okay. All right, we're up. Yeah. Some of these we have uh, seen, uh, they were so special, there's a special category, category for them. And there's no nominees for this, there's a winner. And a category, it's easy. Okay. Should I give this one to Brittany? Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay, so we have an award for best twist ending. Oh, 
A most splendid episode. Most splendid episode. Yeah. 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 Sitting by the wind yeah. Awesome. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Blaine, uh, what's up, guys? <laughs> It's an honor. It's my first award ever in this. Uh, I'm really proud to be here. And uh, yeah, it's special. It's really special. Uh, we are honored to win the only award with no other nominees. Thank you so much for coming to the festival. My name is Alexi. I'm Blake Kern the third. This is Patrick Howard. He's our writer director. Thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate it. Oh my god, thank you Michael Abrams. Fucking hey man, Michael Abrams. And I want to thank Shaden too. Um, and everybody at Kapow, thank you guys for it. Yeah! 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 Brilliant. Nestor is a major Brilliant. director from the New York Life office in Los Angeles. Yeah! yeah. He very generously gave a wonderful um, contribution to make this successful. Why? Yeah! <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. This is, this is great. Uh, when David uh, invited me and he was saying, you know, you're going to have to present an award. I was really nervous because I don't like to speak in, in public, and I'm really disappointed because he promised me that either Nelva Cruz or Salma Hayek would be the one to screen. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is the Compound Spirit Award, and this is a film that takes special over all films in the festival, <laughs> which shows the spirit of love, what we need right now, and togetherness. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. And the uh, power goes. No. Do I have no minute? No. It's no. one person. All right. It's in the envelope. Portrait of a superhero. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. This is awesome. Thanks for the Kapawi, Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival. Uh, for those of you who may not know, I have the Kapawi! <laughs> for, uh, for those of you that may not know, this is Superhero. Uh, superhero is a real life superhero, and he's been doing this for over 20 years now. Um, he was featured in the HBO documentary Superhero, it was a Rolling Stone article, there was just a big article in the Tampa Bay Times about him. And uh, if you don't know his story, I would urge you to go and, uh, well, I guess you won't be able to see the film because it's already screened, but uh, we'll be screening at a bunch of other festivals around the world coming soon. And um, it's just a really inspirational story, what he's been doing, how he's been basically going out and just helping people in any way that he can. But while dressed as a superhero. Yeah! Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I pretty much said it all, and uh, thanks again. I really appreciate it. Yeah! <laughs> they flew all the way in from Florida and asked him on a plane? <laughs> no, but my arms got tired. <laughs> they had to stop at Albuquerque. So, um, one thing New York Life does, they number one had this gentleman sponsored us, uh, but it takes a lot of folks to run this festival. The um, get bags that the filmmakers got, those would be stuffed, people would be manned to come in. We have a lot of New York Live volunteers here. And New York Live is a program for uh, organizations like you guys. Uh, they, if our employees contribute their time, the New York, New York Life Foundation makes a contribution. And mm 
We have a check for these guys tonight. Ooh. Ooh. Broken Pal tonight. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. <laughs> uh, we want to say uh, thank you to New York Life. We also want to say thanks to David for all my great insurance and investment opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't gotten to meet the one with the blood drive yet, but we'll get to that one. <laughs> and I uh, want to thank you all for being here tonight and New York Life working your butt off and a big check. And it'll go to the Wolves and Veterans and maybe we'll save one life today. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. 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 Who is going to be someone you didn't know in a year or five years or ten years. And we have, you saw that tonight, for guys who saw the Midas screen at 5 o'clock, uh, the most promising new filmmaker. We get one of these out a year, only one, no time. <laughs> Joseph Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to David and Shade and everybody at Powell. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this film is about the human experience and the human relationships. And I would definitely not have been able to stand up here tonight if it weren't for a very select few members of my team. I can't even talk right now. Uh, <laughs> Daniel, Oren, you guys rock. Michael, and my dad, my mom, everybody who helped put this film together. Thank you guys so much. Uh, it's pretty cool. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry guys, there's a presidential uh, alert. <laughs> <laughs> you can tweet it again. <laughs> so, you have one award left. <laughs> Um, glad to bring AJ up from LA Grip. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah! This is our City of Angels Award. Well, hi, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is AJ. I uh, run a small boutique uh, studio here in Burbank. It's called LA Grip Studios. Um, my mission here is to kind of inspire um, others to tell their stories and just promote local filmmaking here in LA. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Shada and Dave, for having me be a part of this um, experience in this event. Um, I'm really glad to see some of your films out here. Um, Dave, you kind of put me on the spot here, trying to come up with something to say, so I went ahead and looked up some stuff. Did you guys know that the uh, first film? first movie made here in L.A. was in 1897, and it was a 25-second clip that was uh, for, I think, the Edison Manufacturing Company. And then 20 years later, uh, the first motion picture uh, studio opened up. And since then, in these 100 years, uh, we've had a lot of uh, big production companies from around the world build their home here in L.A. And recently, now, L.A. Grip. And with that, I wanted to um, just say, that we are presenting this Angel <laughs> City of Angels Award, and uh, I'm very excited to announce the winner and present this $500 gift certificate. Can you say that louder first? And I'm excited to announce the winner and give them a $500 gift certificate to our services here. Um, LA Grip, we provide a lot of the lighting grip uh, gear for uh, different productions, and we also help produce projects. So uh, the winner for this award is. Reclamation. Reclamation. Yeah. 
Actually shot this in Burbank, um, in some gorilla and some not gorilla <laughs> <laughs> locations. Um, and yeah, cre- uh, I'll let you talk in a sec. But creating a sci-fi um, world that's set in the future is definitely hard. So yeah, it's studios and helping all that is fantastic. <laughs> I'm Tom Wolf, and I wrote the executive produce Reclamation. Um, uh, Rashmi Umayo, my producer and lead actress, could not be here tonight, um, but it would not have happened without her. And of course, our whole cast and crew, uh, all the way nice. Except for Roy, our DP, who is from Sydney, Australia. Um, yeah, where you're from. Uh, but uh, Rashmi, actually, I just want to say real quick, she, um, this oh, film would not have happened without her at all because uh, I actually, uh, yesterday, it was my sixth anniversary of moving to LA. Yeah! Uh, Four years ago, I almost left, went back to Cleveland, but Roshni convinced me to stick around and make a bunch of films with Allison and her, and uh, I don't regret it for a second. It's been fantastic. Uh, uh, we're just so honored to be here. Thank you, Dave, and all the team here, and the guy who makes the popcorn. I two buckets of popcorn. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so um, but thank you so much, and for all the winners, you guys, great, great work. It was so much fun coming here. You guys, everyone did a great job, so thank you. But thank you and thank you for everyone for t- turning up because it's not just about making it, it's about also turning up and supporting everybody else that's putting in their heart and soul to make films. So keep at it. It was so nice and you guys to you guys and tell me where you shot the there was a science fiction of set in the future but you had like a futuristic type thing, weren't you? Uh, we shot uh, North Hollywood. We we shot at it was called One Star's Light uh, Studio, but I think they changed it into Cinema Collaboratorium, and they were fantastic there. They let us build sets and let us use all the equipment. So if you need a good studio, they're great people. Terrence McGee over there, he was one of our producers. And, yeah, and you guys. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> whoa, green. The other other two uh, locations, main locations we used, uh, we used a Burbank um, train station uh, for one of the futuristic fight scenes, uh, really cool green lights when you are there at 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, And then my favorite one was Burbank um, water and power facility, that massive um, power plant. Um, We got to... um, Tech scout it, and I fell in love with it. And I'm like, we have to shoot here, and it's amazing. So even if you can do a tech scout in there, go for it. It's amazing. It's inspirational. Use Los Angeles, my friend. Yeah. The tech scouts free. They charge the film. Well, even though we're intergalactical, we're still we love home, we love LA. So it's good. Thank you. Yeah. Are the producers from Nobody, Nothing But Here? Okay, Nothing But (laughs) Okay, guys, thank you for coming out. Uh, Yeah! Don't make this a success. We love you guys. Let's prepare for Propel 4 in 2019. We have a black pumping screen that's in plenty here this evening, so... This concludes the Kapow Intergalactic Awards Ceremony. There might be some interviews later on. Who knows?